Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass this morning, where we pray for Afghanistan and for the following uh, birthdays, Father Ashley Orgel, three months detention, Hermia Flanagan, Michelle Jordan, Deborah Carlson, Rene Hugh, Dino Vessels, and Nadia Abdullah. For those recommended to our prayers, especially the sick and the dying, and for the repose of the souls of Lisa Rabulan, uh, Byron Erasmus, Conrada Limbo, Magdalene Peterson, and Wendy Manning. And for all the souls in purgatory, and for the reign of God's kingdom, honor. And it is the commemoration of blessed John Baptist, Michael Aloysius, and James, priests and martyrs. In the name of the Father, <coughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <coughs> to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, to the martyrs, Blessed John Baptist, Michael Aloysius, James, and their companions, you gave the grace to remain faithful and to pardon while suffering dismaying hardships. Through their intercession, grant also to us to be always willing to remain faithful to your church and to be reconciled with one another. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Judges. At that time, all the citizens of Shechem came together and all Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth to anoint the king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, I shall, live, shall I leave my fatness, by which gods and men are honored, and go to sway over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come you and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go to sway over the trees? 
And the tree said to the vine, Come you and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine, which cheers gods and men, and go to sway over the trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, Come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing <coughs> me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your strength, O, o, o Lord, the King rejoices. In your, In your strength, strength, O Lord, the King rejoices. In your strength, O Lord, the King rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his heart's desire. You have not withheld the prayer of his lips. In your strength, O Lord, the King rejoices. You came to meet him with blessings of prosperity. You have set on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked you for life, and this you have given, days that will last from age to age. In your strength, O Lord. <coughs> By your saving help, great is his glory. You have bestowed upon him majesty and splendor. You have granted him blessings forever, made him rejoice with the joy of your presence. In your strength, O Lord, the King rejoices. Alleluia. Alleluia. The word of the Lord is living and active, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again, about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers, and pay them their wages, beginning with the last, up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I chose to give to this last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose 
with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So, the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. In many modern Bibles, uh, the translators or editors of the Bible have put in little titles at the beginning of various passages. And so, in most Bibles, uh, you see for this passage of, from John, uh, from Matthew, one, uh, ver- uh, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16, you see the little title, the parable of the vineyard workers. Nearly all the the versions of the Bible use that little title, the parable of the vineyards. Some use the expression, the image of the vineyard. And one that I know of calls it the parable of the good employer. But we could also call it parable, as Jesus does, the parable of the kingdom of heaven. And it's a parable that uh, sits uneasily with many people because it seems rather unfair. And uh, it's a contrast, if you like, between human logic, human thinking, and divine logic, divine thinking. In terms of human logic, it's a kind of wage negotiation taking place at the beginning of the day, agreeing on the wages. So it is a matter of strict justice. This is what's agreed, this is what you will get. Uh, Whereas with the divine logic, it's never just or only Justice. Justice is laced with mercy, compassion, with love, with generosity. And there's no other explanation for that but the nature of the giver. St. Bernard says, you can't explain love. He says, I love because I love. I love in order to love. And so it is with God. We cannot explain the generosity of God. It is just part of being God. But there's another sense in which this parable could be called a parable of the last judgment. Because the the generosity of God takes little account of strict logic, of strict human logic. The generosity of God knows no limits. And so those who turn to God with their whole heart at the last minute can be treated equally with those who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat of life in fidelity for years and years. And yet, people like St. Dismas on the cross turned to the Lord at the last minute of his life. And Jesus said to him in response, to his acknowledgement, today you will be with me in paradise. So it is a manifestation of the mercy of God. It is a parable of the last judgment and of every judgment from God. It is always laced with mercy, compassion, and generosity. And it's that generosity of spirit 
that we are invited to reflect in our dealings with one another today and every day. The last will be first, and the first may be the last. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs. And may the gifts that gave blessed to John Baptist, Michael Aloysius, and James and their companions courage under persecution make us too steadfast in all trials through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, 
and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end, we acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and give you power in Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with these holy martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Bring it down. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Amen. 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 <coughs> the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Whoever loses their lives for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save them, says the Lord. Let us pray. Preserve in us your gift, O Lord, and may what we have received at your hands for the feast day of blessed martyrs, John Baptist, Michael Aloysius, and James and companions, bring us salvation and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go and serve the Lord with our lives.